Sheldon, come on, I need my own space. But we've always shared a room. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things about young Sheldon that make no sense to a Big Bang Theory fan. So anyway, we're eight years old and Sheldon converts my Easy Bake Oven to some kind of high-powered furnace. <laughs> Just classic. For this list, we'll be looking at oddities and inconsistencies between the OG series and its prequel spinoff. Which of these is the biggest problem in your mind? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Their house isn't on blocks. It might sound a bit odd to say that it makes no sense that the Cooper family's house on young Sheldon isn't on blocks, but according to older Sheldon, it should be. Avoiding my mother in our own house was proving to be difficult. You see, in a season one Big Bang episode, Sheldon mentions to Penny that he was sick while in Germany one time, and his mother had to leave him there to get back home because... No, my mom had to fly back to Texas to help my dad because the house had slipped off the cinder blocks again. Again? Well, maybe they'll move into a house on cinder blocks in a future season, but as of season six, the house young Sheldon lives in is big and definitely sitting on a proper foundation. Are you two trying to burn down the house? Number nine, Soft Kitty isn't just for when you're sick. As Big Bang fans know, Sheldon Cooper has a lot of rules. Don't sit in his spot, don't touch his food, don't whistle, and don't sing Soft Kitty to someone unless they're sick. Sing Soft Kitty to me. Soft Kitty is for when you're sick, you're not sick. And for the most part, the prequel series lives up to the latter with Sheldon's mother singing Soft Kitty to her sick son. Soft. Kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. But then in season four, not only is the soft kitty rule broken, but it's also broken by Sheldon himself. A young Sheldon, in the midst of learning to ride a bike, calms his nerves at night by singing soft kitty to himself. Not to nitpick here, but determined and brave is not sick. Happy kitty, sleepy kitty, purr, purr, purr. Number eight age discrepancy. So we know that Shelly is nine years old in 1989 in the first season of Young Sheldon. We also know that he starts college at age 11. So he's really good to graduate? He sure is. However, in the fourth Big Bang episode when he's fired from the university, Sheldon mentions to Leonard that he spent the last three and a half years working. Before that, he spent four years on his thesis, and prior to that, he was in college. Before that, I was in college, and before that, I was in the fifth grade. <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to know that all this comes to 11 and a half years, assuming that he was in college for four years, of course. Which means if he started college at 11, he should be 22 or 23 at that point. But in the first season of The Big Bang Theory, he's 27. So where did those extra years in between go? Math, science, history, unraveling the mystery. Number seven, really young Sheldon didn't love comic books. It's a great moment in the spin-off series when a nine-year-old Sheldon, who previously had no interest in comic books, discovers the X-Men and changes his tune. Young mutants with incredible powers who were feared and misunderstood by the entire world. Hey, it's about me. However, while young Sheldon fans surely enjoyed it, Big Bang fans were probably thinking about how it made no sense. You see, as we all learned on The Big Bang Theory, Sheldon Cooper was into comic books at a way younger age than nine. And we know this because he had an honorary Justice League of America card at five years old. It's been in every wallet I've owned since I was five. <laughs> Why? It says, keep this on your person at all times. <laughs> It's right here under Batman's signature. <laughs> and then there was the time that his sister's friends lied and told him that Batman was coming to his sixth birthday party. I waited by the door for hours. Closest thing to Batman I saw was when a robin flew into the window. <laughs> Seems the X-Men weren't Sheldon's first foray into comic books and superheroes. Number six, Sheldon didn't enjoy making schedules. Schedules, contracts, road trip seating charts, Sheldon loves them all. All right, we have seven people and two cars. In the lead car, driven by Leonard, will be <laughs> myself, Amy Farrah Fowler, and Penny. Yes! <laughs> Any excuse to create a schedule or draw up a contract and he's happier than a pig in, well, you know what. But apparently that love for schedules came to Sheldon later in life. 
In Young Sheldon Season 5, Sheldon agrees to loan out his unused dorm room to other students for studying. At least that's what he thinks it's for. You think there's any chance my girlfriend and I could use it sometime? You two study together? However, as more and more students want time in the room, Sheldon gets a little annoyed with all the scheduling involved. So much so that he decides to just put up a sign-up sheet. Doesn't sound like the Sheldon Big Bang fans know. Hey, Shelly, you busy? I'm turning my dorm room schedule into a spreadsheet so people can sign up at school and stop calling me. Yeah, about that. Number 5. Sheldon had already been in a room with Stephen Hawking. One of the few people that Sheldon ever considered an intellectual equal was Stephen Hawking. So when Howard started working with him, Sheldon was, of course, desperate to get an introduction. Please, please, <laughs> let me meet Hawking. I told you no. But I said I'm sorry. No, you said would it help if I said I'm sorry. <laughs> he begged his friend, even telling him about the time, as a six-year-old, he dressed up as Hawking for Halloween. No, I took my dad's desk chair, attached a speak and spell to it, and <laughs> made my sister push me up and down the block to trick or treat. <laughs> or about the time he went with his dad to Caltech to hear Hawking speak. No, wait, he didn't mention that one, did he? Stephen Hawking is giving a lecture and I really need to go. Can we talk about this one, Miles Shower? That's right, he never mentioned the fact that he had been in a room with Hawking years earlier. We'd say he probably just forgot, but we know Sheldon doesn't forget. I, I don't make arithmetic mistakes. Are you saying I do? <laughs> oh no, 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 of course not. It's just, I was thinking, oh gosh golly, I made a boo-boo. Looks like the young Sheldon writers did though. Number four, the Big Bang Theory never mentioned Dr. Sturgis. As we learned in the original series, some of the biggest influences in Sheldon's life were probably Stephen Hawking, Professor Proton, and his grandfather Pop-Pop. And you asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I told you my Pop-Pop, because that was the year my grandfather died. I missed him, and I wanted him back. But throughout the show's 12-year run, not once did Sheldon even mention Dr. Sturgis. Who is Dr. John Sturgis, you ask? Well, according to young Sheldon, he was a guest professor of physics at East Texas Tech, who became close to, and a role model for, a young Sheldon. My sister likes to say that I'm an alien. I've often been called that. Sturgis also dated Sheldon's Mima. Connie, I would like to see you again. Perhaps we could have dinner sometime. Yes, we would love that. And yet, older Sheldon seems to have completely forgotten about him and his influence on his younger years. Number 3. Sheldon and Missy Shared a Room When Sheldon's twin sister Missy comes to visit on The Big Bang Theory, she tells Leonard and Howard a story about the time he converted her Easy Bake Oven into a furnace. Why, you ask? Well, as she and Sheldon confirmed, it was an attempt to keep her out of his room. I needed a place to fire ceramic semiconductor substrates for homemade integrated circuits. He was trying to build some sort of arm robot to keep me out of his room. And if you only started watching Young Sheldon in Season 5, then maybe that makes sense. But the issue comes with the fact that for the first four seasons of the show, Sheldon and Missy shared a room. You know you want privacy too. I suppose it would be nice to have all my trains and science equipment in here. So maybe the Easy Bake incident happened after Missy moved into her own space? Nope. In her story, she quotes their ages at the time as being eight years old. And they're already nine when the series begins. I had to go through the entire second grade with crooked eyebrows my mom drew on. Oh, is that what that was? I just assumed that the second grade curriculum had rendered you quizzical. <laughs> Number two, his dad doesn't have alcohol use disorder. One of the most frustrating differences between The Big Bang Theory and its prequel series is the portrayal of Sheldon's father, George Sr. For most of the Big Bang run, Sheldon's dad, who had passed away by then, was presented to us as having been an overweight, not too bright absentee father with alcohol use disorder. He died when I was 14. I'm sorry to hear that. So was the man who owned the local liquor store. <laughs> However, that isn't at all who he is on Young Sheldon. Sure, he enjoys his beer, but he definitely isn't the angry drunk described to us on the OG series. My father was not one to spare the rod when my brother would sneak into his truck and drink his driving whiskey. <laughs> and as for being an absentee father, Sheldon's mom is definitely more involved in his life, but George Sr. does take an interest in him and there are some sweet father-son moments between them as well. Okay, Mr. Spock. 
Your first order is to return to your seat. Aye, Captain. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sheldon Had Friends Not only is it intimated many times throughout the Big Bang Theory, but Sheldon even comes right out and says it on at least one occasion. He didn't have any friends growing up. You may find this hard to believe, but I didn't have any friends growing up. No, I, I get that. <laughs> now, the original series walks that bold statement back a little bit in the final season when we meet Tam and learn he and Shelly were besties as kids. When I moved to California, what did you do? I stayed in Texas. Do you believe this guy? <laughs> However, according to young Sheldon, the young Cooper had multiple friends growing up besides Tam, from Dr. Sturgis to Paige to his college dorm neighbors and video game playmates. You have video games? A bunch. You play? My Mima and I be Quest of Adira. Sure, he wasn't the most popular kid in town, but young Sheldon wasn't as friendless as older Sheldon claimed. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.